The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello. Hey, what you doing? Uh, I am playing Titanfall, a new first-person shooter on my PC. Well, I'm being productive, and I found a viewer email that suggested we build some sort of WASAD gaming pedals. Oh, yeah. You know, as a PC gamer, I can appreciate how those would be useful. Sometimes you can't hit every button you need to with your fingers. You could use your feet. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. I'll see you tomorrow at the shop. All right, we'll build it then. Bye. Bye. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Here's my plan to try and improve Wasad gaming. Now when you're sitting there playing video games, your feet have nothing to do. Maybe step on Dorito crumbs. So I thought we could have two foot pedals, one for each foot, and then have two stages of movement for each pedal. That way each foot could do two things. For instance, in the video game, you could push about halfway to make your character crouch, and then push all the way to make them lay down or go prone, as they call it in the video games. Maybe that's an official military term, I don't know. We'll use a Teensy, which is a type of embedded microcontroller that uses a USB Atmel chip. Basically, it can act as a HID, a human interface device. You plug it into your computer, and it thinks this is a keyboard or a joystick. So this will basically be acting like a secondary keyboard on your computer system. So we will wire up the Teensy, get the code working, make sure that part's going to work. Then we'll make some mechanical foot pedals that can be stored under your desk, put them in deep so you can only reach them when you need to, but they'll always be there when you want to do some serious gaming. So we'll do the Teensy first, get the programming working, then build the foot pedals, then test it out. Let's take a look at the Teensy. It's an Atmel microcontroller that has a USB mode on it, and you basically don't need any external circuitry. There's a, a few resistors and some caps and a crystal, and the chip, you know, you can hook it up as a USB device, which allows the chip itself to be a HID, a human interface device. In this case, we want it to be a keyboard. In the example we've wired here, I have four keys hooked up to simulate WASD, or WASAD, for moving your character in a game. Now we're not going to use the foot pedals to replicate the WASAD buttons, the movement buttons. We still want those to be on our fingers, but the other keys, like some of the um, ancillary weapons and abilities, that's where we want to put it at our feet. That way we don't have to play finger twister. So I've got the Teensy hooked up to my computer with the USB port. So we're using Arduino 1.05 and we've installed the Teensy libraries to it. You can get this from the Teensy website. So now under board, we can select Teensy 2.0, which is this little guy right here. We also want to go to USB type and select keyboard, mouse, and joystick. For whatever reason, they don't just have keyboard, but whatever, this will work. All right, we just want the uh, keyboard part. So what we're going to do now is start putting in some code so we can use this like a keyboard. Okay, so setup. We're going to do three pins as in our example because we're going to make this uh, was ed. And we're going to define these pins uh, as inputs with a pull-up. Uh, Atmel chips have internal pull-up resistors, so you don't always need to have an external pull-up resistor for a switch or button. I believe it's 10K, which is usually fine. And by using the internal pull-ups, you need less parts. Because they're already there, why not use them? Okay, so we set the four pins as pull-up. Now we're gonna go to our main loop. Okay. Keyboard command set modifier. Now a modifier is, uh, if I can spell it right, <laughs> the modifier is like control, alt, shift. So we don't want any of those pressed. So we're basically saying that there's no modifiers on our secondary keyboard. Now, you can plug as many keyboards as you want into Windows, and it doesn't care. I'm sure most operating systems do that, but uh, you know we're using Windows here. So this keyboard, or Teensy as keyboard, will work alongside of your existing keyboard. 
So if digital read zero equals zero, that means if we pull the button low, so it's got to pull up, normally it's high or one. By pushing the button, it goes low. Keyboard, set key one. And then key one is going to be set to W. So the reason we say set key one is because at any given point, the keyboard can send six keys back to the operating system plus the modifier key. So let's just say six keys. So if you're in a video game, you might be pushing W to go forward, but you also might be pushing D to go forward and left diagonal. Uh, if you can only push one key at a time, you, you know, could only go forward or only go to the right or left. So what we're gonna do here is if you push the first button, it will send the W key but if you don't push it, key zero, or I'm sorry, if you don't push it, key one will be a zero. And the reason we do that is because if you just tap it once, it will continue to send that key. So what the USB does is it sends a pack, it'll send six keys at once back to the computer. And like I said, one through six. And if you set key one as a W, every time it sends, it will continue to send a W as key one. So you have to also have a condition where you release the button so it no longer sends a W and sends a zero. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so in true programming fashion, we're going to just copy paste what we just did. Now that our program is ready, we can send it to the Teensy and try it out. Let's reprogram the Teensy. It's a little different from other microcontrollers, but not much. Uh, we still hit upload program. But when the time comes, we actually have to hit this reset button because this thing doesn't have a dedicated reset like a UART FTDI chip would. So we actually have to hit the button, which basically tells this thing's bootloader, oh, some code's coming in. So I'm gonna reset myself and program myself, which it just did. So now this thing should be programmed and ready to rock. Let's just do a quick test. We'll close this and we'll just go open our code and try the buttons, W, A, S, D. Okay, let's try it with a game. Okay, here's uh, the Tuscany demo for Oculus Rift. I happen to have on the computer. I don't have my Steam password here at work, so I can't remember what Steam is, so. This is the demo. So I'm moving forward, backward, left, and right in this quaint Tuscan villa. But as I look around at these walls, I realize I'm actually in a trap. I am an alien's zoo plaything in the twilight zone. So the important thing is we can move forward and then we can push two keys at once and we get diagonal movement. So that shows us that yes, indeed, we are getting the multiple key presses that we want. Now again, we don't want to use WASAD for our foot pedals. We're going to actually be mapping other keys, but this definitely shows us that we can use this inexpensive teensy microcontroller unit for a game controller. Now it's time for a tech timeout. So my mom visited last week and in the trunk of her car she had my old electronics kit from when I was a kid. And I was like, hey, give me that, it's mine because my name's on it. So I don't know, I think I probably got this when I was like six or seven. And there was a book that told you, which also has my name on it, you know, so my sister wouldn't steal it, which had all these circuits you could build and I, Probably didn't understand them at the time. Well, I, I know I didn't understand them at the time. But, you know, it kind of showed me that you can wire things up in a certain way and get a result. And, you know, it's always good to learn somehow. I mean, this is pretty much all we had back in the day. We didn't have all this maker movement like the kids do now. These modern kids will grow up and they'll be NASA engineers at age 19. But that's good for the world. Anyway, I think this will be a nice thing to keep around the shop as kind of a piece of history. I'm gonna clean it up first and, you know, try some circuits. It's not in bad shape, considering. We're for the inspired engineer, the maintenance hero, the cunning hobbyist, the always reliable buyer. We're for the passion that begins on the board, the glow of LEDs in the dark, the thrill of a tiny component that holds massive power. We're thinking big and designing even bigger. We're for modding, installing, customizing, and creating something the world has never seen before and may never forget. We're for the gritty lullaby of the factory floor, the workbench, and the affection of industrial grade. For the arsenal of parts, tools, expertise, and support needed to invent, reinvent, and maintain the secret mechanics of the modern world. 
We are Element 14, and it all starts here. Now that we've got the electrical part working, it's time to build the foot pedal mechanically. I've designed it with a linkage so that it activates one switch and then the other one, and also so that the foot pedal itself isn't hitting the switches, the linkage is. So there's some 3D printed parts that we've been working on, and uh, there's also some stuff we need to CNC, so I'm gonna route it out and start putting it together. Here are the routed pieces. Then I 3D printed this. This is um, basically a, uh, what is this? It's kind of a linear slide, and what's gonna happen is there's an indentation here, and that's going to move in and out from underneath the switches. So when you push the pedal down, this goes forward, activating the first switch, and then once it goes forward enough, it'll activate the second switch. That way, instead of the pedals hitting the switches, the switches basically actuate this rod, so yeah, hopefully that'll work. I guess we'll see. Otherwise, my design is doomed. So we start by mounting this guy to the black Sintra base. Okay. <sighs> then this is going to receive the spring and provide back pressure. Sounds like an orthopedic device. So this will basically compress against the spring. So that spring back there is actually what will push the pedal back up. Avengers assemble! I could totally be mistaken for Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Hey, it's like thumb, thumb exercises. I am pumping iron. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this over here and then move on to the next step. We combine the DNA of Allison and Felix to make Alex, the ultimate warrior. It, it can put up lights and film things at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we have tempered and God's domain. <laughs> okay, I'm done. These guys are going to be the pivot points. Right there. I'm going to set them using some super glue and then drill them in place with some screws. Screw it and glue it. All right, so this linkage goes on the under, underside of the pedal. Now we have to assemble it in a certain order because um, we can't drill this way if the pedal's already installed, but we can install that bolt from the side when the pedal's installed, so. Yeah, hopefully it misses these other screws. So this thing that looks like a cubist dog. Arf, arf, arf. Picasso, here I come. <sighs> he goes here and these switches sit on it. So what happens is when you push this, I know it's kind of hard to see because it's like all one color, but when you push this forward, first it actuates the first switch. And then once it goes forward enough, it actuates the second switch, which is sitting right here. We need to install these switches with the utmost care. Felix, while I work on the mechanical stuff, can you put this guy into a uh, PCB so he can be mounted on one of the foot pedals? And then we're gonna have uh, two of the lines going to these switches with a common ground, and then we'll extend it over to the second pedal. Again, two switches with a common ground. She'll have three wires going to the second pedal, and then the USB can be coming out the back of one of the pedals. So basically a little PCB that could pretty much fit like right here. Mm -hmm. A robot helper. There was a Twilight Zone like that. It was called The Machine at Wiffleford's. 
I was about this guy who replaced his entire staff with a computer, but then of course it turned on him, and then figured out that he was redundant, and, and the computer fired him, or something, I don't know, or maybe the earth blew up. A man crash lands on a planet and realizes that the planet is all women, but they are really robots in the Twilight Zone. There, Twilight Zone episode. It's easy. Felix wired up the Teensy here with some cords. So this one will go on this side. We'll hook up disconnects to these switches. And this will extend to the other foot pedal, see how this cord is much longer, and hook up to its switches. So it's basically four keyboard buttons with a really complicated foot pedal switch on it. I could see like, you know, becoming like Sting or Madonna because it sounds cool, but Meatloaf? Felix finished wiring up the switches for us. I think we're ready to go. One, two, one, two. So these will sit like this under your desk. You plug it in like a USB device and hopefully this will give us some more control for gaming. The only thing to do now is test it. Play some video games, <laughs> twist my arm. Okay, I'm back home. I've got the foot pedal controllers set up underneath my desk and I'm gonna test it out with Titanfall. All right, so let's set some foot pedal controls. Uh, in Titanfall, you can like grab missiles and stuff. Normally that's the Q key, but that's kind of hard to hit along with the motion keys. So I'm gonna make that left pedal. There we go. Okay, also sprint. I'm going to make that right pedal. There we go. Okay, that should be good. Apply changes, and now we'll find a game. Oh good, my Titan! Let's get in this thing. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah, shoot something at me! Whoa, run away, run away! Oh! I could not run fast enough. Robot punch! Robot punch! Oh no, I got robot punched! <laughs> that was handy though, using the foot pedal to grab the bullet so I could collect the bullets and still move around. Until of course I got murdered. Well that was fun. Using the foot pedals to have extra controls was just like driving a giant mech robot. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, in honor of Earth Day, we're going to be taking apart an old laser printer and seeing what we can salvage out of it to use in other projects. We'll see you then. In the meantime, I'm gonna play more Titanfall. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel, join the Element 14 community, follow us on Twitter, and become our friend on Facebook. Maybe if I push them in a certain sequence, the computer will explode. Kinda looks like a robot foot. Wait, pretend this is a car. It's totally smashed. Man, I've built a lot of foot pedals over the years. I guess I have a foot pedal fetish. Someday I'll be a real boy. Oh, I'm not. Why isn't this thing going all the way? Uh, I think you're hitting the screw over here. Oh. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm just taking out a note. Hello, can you see me over there? The latest in wearable electronics. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.